Hey, what's up, guys? Nick Major here with Adobe Radio, about to hop on a video chat with Mason Moose. So, going to chat with him about the latest with Metro Station, as well as his brand new project, Social Order, and what he's been up to in quarantine. So, stick around, stay tuned, and let's chat with Mason. Twenty twenty, the year's like more than halfway done now. But what what a year it's been! How have you been, man? Been good. Uh, just been, you know, obviously working on music. Um, me and Trace released one song before the whole world went to hell. Yeah, so that track, it was I Hate Society. That was the name of it. I feel like someone's always watching me when I'm all by myself, but I shouldn't believe it. Was there bigger plans for Metro Station this year with that song? Yeah, we were definitely working on, and we still are, working on a whole new record. Um, but, you know, Trace is in Nashville. I'm here in, in um, <clears throat> Santa Monica. And, you know, the world's upside down right now. And I think, you know, we're just kind of waiting for the right time to be back in the studio and, um, you know, get a whole game plan going on. Um, I know he's going, he's doing his thing and I'm doing my thing right now. And I think, you know, um, yeah, like I said, the whole world's in flux. I guess kind of right before it, at least one quick fun send off you guys got was I did see you guys did an emo night show back in like February or so. But obviously you have kept plenty busy because you do have your new project that you've been releasing uh, a track for, a few versions of the track. But tell me, how did it come to be? Social Order, it's the name. You guys dropped your first song a couple weeks back. It includes an array of members from talented bands and some guys there, Anthony, who we've worked with before. So how did this uh, whole thing, I, I'm sure you've told the story plenty already, but fill, fill in your boy, Nick, how this <laughs> band came to be. Obviously, I've known Anthony and Matt for a long time. <clears throat> Anthony from Parade of Lights, and he also did Metro Station in the very beginning. And then Matthew uh, Dipani from uh, the Mowgli's and uh, Lou Vecchio from New Politics. Um, our old manager introduced me to Lou and he was like, yo, I think you'd really like hanging out with Lou and it was a uh, it was a zoom call and I was like okay um, I don't really know what we're gonna what we're gonna do but you know I should definitely meet this guy because my old manager's telling me to and he was cool and then all of a sudden um, we hit up Matt we're like hey we're trying to come up with like a little project everyone's in quarantine um, everyone's bored I was bored I was kind of losing my mind just like everybody else I'm sure mm-hmm and I was like, you know, guys, this is really cool, but I think we need a fourth member. And so I called Ant. I'm like, hey, you want to join this little side project that we're trying to work on, you know, during this quarantine? So we've never actually all been in the same room together. Huh. But yeah, we just we put out our we put out our first single, and we're um, we're going to work on more really soon. So what was the writing process like then? You guys were never in the same room together, which I guess it's so doable nowadays with all the technology that we have. But what was that like for you? It's not as fun. I feel like, you know, to really bounce off good ideas, you, you kind of want to have that energy of like being in the same room as each other. But, um, you know, it was, it, it was, it was fine. I mean, I sent the guys the kind of first pass. I wrote a lot of the lyrics and a lot of the melodies and stuff like that. And they really dug it. And then they kind of, you know, added their, you know, um, little things of where they wanted to see the song go. And then, you know, we put it out and then, mm -hmm. um, you know, that was it. And I think it's, I think it's really cool. I mean, it has, it kind of has the, you know, quarantine vibes with some of the lyrics, but I think it kind of goes, you know, there's always going to be craziness going on in the world, you know? Yeah, it's it's kind of, uh, I, I kind of got it. You can choose to be positive during the, these down times. And that's kind of what the, that's what the uh, chorus of that really sent home. And it was awesome. By the way, the song is Going Out Dancing. I don't think we said the, the name of it yet. Oh, this is it. Yeah, the guy who um, produced it, Dan Book, he, he also wrote on it. He's written for, I mean, so many people. Um, Hot Chell Ray, I think he did some stuff with All Time Low. He's done so many people, and he's such a talented uh, writer and producer. So, you know, he's definitely he's definitely the star and made that song pop. So to have him on it was was key. You guys, you had the fun video that was obviously done in quarantine, which is right along the, the message of the song. You just came out with a stripped down version of the song and a lyric version. I don't really know what more you can do other than play this live for people. I'm really ready for, you know, shows, real shows to happen again. And I think mm -hmm. it's gonna slow. Um, I've heard a lot of people, you know, even close friends of mine say over and over again, I can't wait till we go back to normal. I don't think we're ever going back to normal. I don't think that's, I don't think we're ever going back to what it was. I think anything be before, before COVID is just always going to feel like pre COVID. And so I think that's another reason why I wanted to start this new project is I feel like, you know, out of this chaotic time, 
people want something new. People are going to want new stuff. People, you know, this idea of we're going to go back to what it was, you know, even, you know, the kinds of festivals and everything. I think people are going to want new stuff. I think a whole new world. Anything else is just going to feel like it was before the virus. And you, you've been a musician for most of your life at this point, and it's the industry that's going to be most affected by this. First to close down, last to open, is what everyone's saying. What do you see for the future of live shows, of live concerts? I, th- uh, I think small clubs are going to have a big resurgence. <clears throat> Personally, I, I mean, that's just my opinion. I think it's easier to, you know, uh, scan everyone's forehead, see if they got a fever. It's e- easier to get, you know, a couple hundred people in. Um you know, uh, what was I watching the other day? Um, uh, Prince's Purple Rain. And it's like, it all deals with like, you know, that small club. And it's like, that's the spot to be. And everyone wants to be at that club. Mm-hmm. I don't know, something like that. Because I think the big, you know, people I, people will surely do like the festivals and stuff. But I think it's just going to be too chaotic and too hard to, you know, because you're going to want to, people are going to want to trace uh, everybody. You know, if there is an outbreak or, um, you know, they find out someone was at, somewhere and they had it and so they're going to test all those people and i think it'll be easier to you know contact all the people and trace them if it's smaller venues and at this point we don't even know when that'll be because it seems like every step forward we get somehow we get knocked back but hopefully i'm here here in 2022 i and i hate to say but i don't like find that too surprising like that sounds kind of believable with just the the magnitude that this whole thing has become but at least it's people people like you and people that are using this time to be positively productive and are you guys bouncing any new song ideas off of each other you got one out of the way are you guys still keeping at it we are we have we have another one coming out soon called dreams um i've been working on it with uh uh, Anthony, and then we just we actually sent over like a demo to uh, Lou and Matt, and so that'll be coming out soon as well. What was it like to work with Anthony again? I, I don't really know your guys' history, but I know he was at the very start of Metro Station, and so what's that kind of been like reconnecting in the the music side? It was good. Me and him have always had, you know, and he'll he'll be the first to tell you this. We've always had our kind of ups and downs, and we were definitely, you know, the two uh, always hanging out with each other. Uh, you know, especially on the road in the early days of Metro Station, but, you know, we uh, we had a falling out, and then I think it's one of those things where, you know, you just, you reconnect, especially during this time, you reconnect with people that you probably wouldn't of if, you know, you know, and make peace, uh, you know, with... Uh, you wouldn't have done it, I guess, if the world wasn't falling apart. Yeah, it kind of puts some things into perspective. It does, it does. So is that when you guys started talking, was kind of when quarantine... Right around then, right around then. And um, when I went to Palm Springs and right after I went to Palm Springs, LA locked down. And then that's when I was put in contact with Lou. And then from there, I was like, hey, let's get Matt on board and then let's get Anthony on board. And Anthony was a little hesitant at first because we hadn't spoken in so long. But now, you know, we've really reconnected. So yeah, I mean, this whole uh, COVID thing brought us closer together, you know, had us, had us make amends with each other in a good way. You guys could go on a tour with all of each other's bands. It could be a stack bands. Everyone's paying, playing two sets a night. It may, that, that'll be the energy that you need to, to get out of you after so long. We're all seasoned. We're all seasoned uh-huh. players, which is nice. And um, I've been on stage with Matt and I've been on stage with Ant, but I'm really excited to play with Lou because I've never played with him. But he's a, obviously from what I've seen, he's a badass drummer. So one thing I started to do in quarantine is I sold my soul to the Chinese government and I made a TikTok and uh, I've been keeping up at that. And it, I feel like every so often, even like now, Shake It is a banging song on there and there's all these dances going through to it. So uh are you a TikTok guy at all? Are you on it much, or have you have you checked it out? I'm bas- I'm basically running the Metro TikTok. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, Trace will definitely give his input on on certain things, but I've been putting up you know all the videos and everything like that, and then all of a sudden, Shake It blew up. It was it was popular when it when TikTok was first coming coming around. And yeah, then I remember blew up again, and I don't know, man. It's just one of those songs. Um, as far as as far as you know, the Chinese government, you know, looking in and and you know, knowing everything. As long as as long as people are getting paid, <laughs> like you know, and that's okay. I mean, you know, okay, if they want to, if they want to look at, I mean, I got nothing really. I don't know what they're gonna look at, you know. <laughs> that's what I think too. Steal my songs or something. Steal my demos. I don't know what they're gonna say. <laughs> But uh, I, I had a I chatted with Pierre a couple quite a few weeks back. Uh, Pierre from Simple Plan, rather to clarify, and we were talking. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about how I'm just a kid. It was popping off on TikTok, and now Shake It, uh, Shake It is as well. And it's just so funny how songs from years and years ago, this app can really just 
bring it back up to to sharp positions at times and just make it blow up against the uh, with a generation that may not have even known of its existence. Oh, they wouldn't have been at the shows. They would, and they wouldn't. They would have definitely not bought the you know record or you know been old enough to go to shows or anything like that. So that's what's so crazy is like, yeah, a whole new generation of like young kids that. Um, you know, they probably don't even know who the band is. They just love the song, you know. <laughs> but uh, it sounds like maybe Microsoft or some U.S. company is going to be picking up TikTok so we don't have to worry about the Chinese government stealing our info anymore. No, I don't know. Just, as long as it's our own government spying on us. Then That's, that was my exact thought. I was like, okay, cool. So now we're just taking it back to the States. So whatever. I assume, you know, I've, I assume since I was on MySpace, since I was like 13, I've already allowed too much of my information to be online. So I'm like, whatever. I don't have anything too incriminating out there. So I'll just take it as it comes. Yeah, I, I, I know my rights. My rights are for my own government to spy on me, but not a foreign power. No. Yeah, how dare they? How <laughs> dare they? <laughs> But so I know you got mu new music for this. You got, uh, are you going to be waiting until you can meet up with Trace before new Metro Station stuff? Because you guys did take a bit of a break in the past few years. And then, uh, so, but once this kind of cools and you guys are able to get back, you're going to be writing again? Yeah, that's the plan. I mean, we break up and get back together all the time, you know, that's what we do. <laughs> And in the meantime, it sounds like you are able to have a writing outlet with Social Order, which is great because you guys have the uh, way to kind of write via the internet. Or, or however it goes. And one of the things, you know, me and Ant and the other guys said, you know, for Soul Shorter, we're like, we want to do this, you know, as as long as it feels fun, as long as it feels right, you know? And I think that's kind of, it's nice just being able to have a project with like, you know, seasoned guys who know what they're doing and we're not, we are taking it seriously, but we're not like racking ourselves over like, oh my gosh, you know, we have to get certain things done. We're taking it, you know, as, you know, just a nice pace. Mm -hmm. There's no deadlines. It's just kind of up to you guys to have fun and create it on your own terms. Exactly. And like you were saying, you know, especially during this time, you know. That's awesome. It sounds like some great people have been involved with this project. And like you said, it is all a bunch of seasoned veterans in the music world. So that must just be a world of difference coming into a project where everybody can really bring their own thing. And uh, you've all been able to really compliment each other with this fun, with this fun sound. It's nice. I mean, we even have, you know, I mean, people that are already wanting to book us, you know, we only have one song. And it's like, I think people are, you know, not nervous about it because they're like, well, you've sold a bunch of records and you, Matt, you've sold a bunch of records and Lou, you've sold a bunch of records and y'all have all played before. So I think people, you know, can put us on stage and be like, oh, these guys could play. You'll just play Going Out Dancing 10 times in a row and then <laughs> yeah. that'll, that'll be the set. And, and that's it'll why be... we're trying to put out more songs because <laughs> we, we got one. We only got one. But, but that's, that's good. It sounds like play each other's hits is what we could do, I guess. Hey, that would be a that would be a banging Bang tour. tour. That would be a lot of fun. But play some uh, politics, play some Mowgli's, get some Metro Station in there. Right. Yeah. Anything else worth discussing that you've got in the works, or is this pretty much the uh, the main thing right now? A new a new song I'm dropping with this uh, DJ group called Stiletto. It's called uh, the song's called State of Mind, and that's going to drop September 18th. And then uh, yeah, like I said, we're working on a new song for Social Order that'll come out. Um, Hopefully soon. Hopefully by the end of the month. We'll see. And then, yeah, you know, when things kind of get a little back, uh, you know, I said almost said back to normal. We're not going back to normal. But once it kind of chills down, we'll work on the new Metro record as well. So a couple different things. Cool. That's awesome, dude. And we need to properly hang at some point because it has been so long. So I'm glad to see that you're doing well and that everything seems to be going as good as it can in this insane time. And uh, I appreciate you catching up. Thank you so much for having me, Nick. Yep, and uh, we'll talk more soon, all right, dude? Awesome, brother. Yep, later. Okay, everybody, that was my chat with Mason Musso. I hope you enjoyed it. You probably know the man from Metro Station, his new band, Social Order, dropping great songs, so be sure to check them out. If you like this interview, be sure to give it a like, leave a comment below, subscribe to Adobe Radio to be up to date with all the latest news, interviews, music updates, and more from your favorite artists. I am once again Nick Major. Tune into the Nick Major Show every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Keep your hands clean, keep your mouth and nose covered when you are going out there. See you next time.